super, I'm super, I'm super excited because tonight we're going to build this battery. <laughs> Man, I almost lost it here. Oh, it's all good. Yo, my friends, it's a late night show again. Welcome back to the off grid garage. Late night show. So in tonight's video, we want to build the um, Zeplos Mason 280 amp per hour do it yourself kit. Look at this. It totally fits onto our trolley from our battery 1.0. Nice. I, I don't really want to build this battery here on the workbench because it will be over 100 kilograms and I'm not sure how to get this off the workbench later on onto the trolley. So we are building the battery right away down here as we have done it with battery 1.0 back in the good old days. So this, this case alone with all the accessories inside weighs already over 24 kilograms. And here, look at this shit show. Look at this mess inside this box here. There are parts flying around everywhere. Jeez, what is going on here? Loose bus bars, bags with screws and terminals. This is all loose in here. Yeah, it's a single bus bar. I think what they have done is they put everything in this plastic bag here in the middle and zip tied this one to the frame. But during transport, the bag... This is not how you do it, Zeplos. You need to put a cardboard box inside this metal enclosure here and have all the accessories in this cardboard box. This is a total mess here. And all these, these fairly heavy metal things here, they are banging around. <laughs> The plastic bag ripped open with all these heavy metal stuff inside. Okay, I think I've um, got everything sorted so far, but I'm not sure if this is complete. So we've got the two PCBs, the A and the B side with the temperature sensors and the connection cables for the PCBs to the BMS. We've got the squishy foam stickers here in between the battery cells the eva tape there's more eva tape this is the insulation film for the lid the epoxy sheets to isolate against the metal chassis we've got all the bus bars here some rubber feet screws aluminium bus bars four handles the fuse see the fuse was just loose inside the box fuse holder, positive and negative terminals, and these um, these um, these side um, straps, these locks. This is for if you stack them on top of each other, so you can lock them and make sure they are not going anywhere. And we've got this funny little thing here. I'm not sure what that is. And a big strip of Chinese chewing gum. And, and there, is, there is, no, there is, um, there is no, there is no manual anywhere. The manual is missing completely. You've got all these marks here where the paint came off from this metal stuff banging around inside this. Well, I must say this one here, this one is super, super sturdy. This is really thick steel profiles. They welded together here. No wonder it is 25 kilos already. 
Yeah, the front here is a bit different. The display is here on the top left hand corner. Got CAN and RS485 1 and 2. The power and reset button, all the LEDs, dip switches. And we've got four terminals up here. Two negative and two positive to daisy chain these batteries stand together. And the earth, well, there's no, there's no actual thread or stud or something. Like, like on this box here, right? There's some exposed metal here, which actually starts rusting already, which is um, totally missing here. Or is this just the paint I need to take off? I don't know, because I don't have the manual for it. Okay, no big deal. I found it online. So the first step is to assemble the handles on the outside, of course. And the last sentence says, set the torque index of the electric screwdriver to three and lock the screws until we hear the sound of da-da. <laughs> really? Da-da? What, what does it mean, da-da? <laughs> that is insane. I like it. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to build this battery. Da-da. <laughs> insane. That is incredible. <laughs> I cannot seem to find these screws. M4 countersunk nuts. What is an M4 countersunk nut? Huh? That is totally nuts. There are no nuts. Okay, I, I think I got it now. The, the, the nuts actually are inside. They are welded on the inside of the box already. Well, there was definitely no da-da. Okay, let me quickly put these handles into this case here. And then, um, da-da. Yeah, look at this. I just um, took off the front panel with the BMS mounted and there are two screws missing here. These were the two screws we found in the in the box. Yeah, so this BMS is 150 4850 and it seems to have equipped a lot more of these MOSFETs here while the smaller 100 amp see there were some gaps in between there were no no MOSFETs because of the smaller current but here all of the MOSFETs are installed shunt connectors for the PCBs display bus bars so and we also want to take off the front wow look at this front panel that is built like a tank look at these supports in here how do we how do we look how massive that is because this is also our compression plate this compresses the batteries inside the box here this is well built So we now use our epoxy sheets here to isolate the metal case towards our batteries. Four of them are wider and the two smaller ones they are coming here in the bottom. So see like this, this is where the batteries are standing on and these ones they are coming as a, as a side wall protector isolator. Come on. And then we've got four more, two for the back and two for the front.
And this is where the battery cells go in, eight on each side. Well, starting with battery number one over here, which is our most negative one, and then go all the way to eight, number nine, and then on here, 16, most positive. I, I didn't read the manual yet, but I think it's the same as in the smaller Mason. It cannot cannot be any different, right? To the inner side and then battery cell placement, plate front and cell battery after. See, I don't um I don't know. With the with the smaller Mason pack, um it was it came with an installation guide and on the back side was the drawing for your batteries, how they need to be put in. There's there's nothing like this here in this online guide. I'll, I'll just put it together. Okay, I think we've got only this picture here. You can see the bus bar connections down there. Negative on the left and positive on the right. Rip open the EVA 2 and apply to the side A of the top module. What? 12 times M4 by 8 millimeter Phillips hex screw set. I don't understand anything here. I think I just follow what we have done in the other Mason and have a look at the pictures here. Um, it looks very much the same, so let's go with that and see how we go. It can't be that hard, eh? So I think it is time to get our battery 1.0 and transform it into battery 3.0. Let's take out the fishbone here. Come on, come on. It looks really like a fishbone, right? The good old QCC balance cables. Wow. Do you still remember when we did this? It is a long time ago. All right, let's start with um, cell number eight. It needs to go in here. Yeah, that's good. So you want to start with some squishy foam, AKA EVA tape. This is how we start. Okay, I know it's not straight. I'm looking from above. I cannot really see it. But here, here, so it's gone. Ah, it doesn't matter. We've got the spreadsheet of all the battery cells, right? We don't need these stickers anymore. This is the main negative. Negative, positive. So it's correct, right? It is correct. Four, three, number two. And number one. And then we put this sticky foam in between. We should have the most negative on this side. So negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And then we jump on the other side and do the same again here. And we've got our main positive on this side here. That should do the trick. This is exactly how it was here. See, most negative, most positive. So I guess this is the same system. I hope so. So we just need one of these EVA tapes and put this here, put this here on the cell. So we've got one, can you see that? Yeah, we've got the first one here in the back and then the next one goes on the first cell. So you've got one in the back, one over here and then we put the next Onto the next battery, and then we keep going. Nice and squishy. Squishy foam battery, squishy foam battery, squishy foam battery. And this is how it works. And then we compress them all together and the foam actually will isolate the batteries against each other and also even out some, some, well, some cells are a little bit bulged. They are a bit pregnant. Just the uneven surface on the outside. This will smooth everything out and fixes them nicely together.
this time I'm cleaning up as we go. I don't want to end up in this big mess of explosion of shit everywhere. <laughs> that is, that is heavy. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. We now need this um, front plate made out of tank steel. And these two little brackets, they are facing upwards. Wow, this is a lot of... Hey, look at this gap here. Look at this gap. This is how far this plate can go in to squeeze them together. Oh, wow. Okay, let's get these screws. I think these are the... These ones here. These ones, these longer ones. Oh, they're almost too short. Holy! It just fits into the thread. That will be a good compression now. So as you can see, we've got these screws in here, the bolts, into the frame and on the front plate. And when I start tightening them, it pulls in this front plate, of course, and then compresses all the cells. And because um, this... where is it? Here. So this is exactly one, two, three millimeters. And see how easy it compresses. But over this whole area, it is probably a lot of force necessary to get this compressed. Let me do a time lapse here so you can see the compression when I tighten these screws. Could you see that? How they're squeezed together? I still get the torque wrench out now and tighten these screws with 8 to 9 newton meters just to be on the safe side and they're all having the same torque. I don't, I don't think we get eight newton meters on these screws here. They're already pretty tight. I think eight newton meters is all the way in. Wow, they are not going anywhere. Well, you still can move them a little bit. You can feel it when you put your finger on this gap here and squeeze them together. You can feel them moving just a tiny bit. But this is just like... I mean, this is not like a 300 kilo compression, you know, but it is a very, very tight fixture, I would say. Let's call it a tight fixture. Yeah, you can see the gap in between where the squishy foam is. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, what I have just noticed is, look at this gap here. This is a far wider gap than this one, for example, or this one. And I think this is because these cells are already bloated more than these ones. See, there's a fairly large gap in between here. And this one is fairly narrow. So the gaps are not the same. But we know these, these cells are a bit bloated. They have been used for over a year. So they are not really straight and even anymore. But the squishy foam actually evens this out and with this compression now, I guess they will have get used to that. Take these two EVA tape stickers and put them under these PCB brackets. Just, um, just like this. So this is our PCB A, which goes on this side. And this is the PCB B, which goes on the other side. So make sure you've got your connectors here to the front where the PCB will sit. Okay, I think it's time for the bus bars. I'm, I'm not sure why they have included these copper washers here. But I thought this might be for the... Um, just to maximize the contact area maybe. What do you think? It's something... Can we still use them? Can we use them for our purpose here as well? Would that make any benefit? Or shall we keep the pure aluminium terminals here? Because we've got aluminium bus bars as well. I don't think we need copper washers in between. Oh. Nah, just leave them away. Okay, but first, 
They always look a bit like goofy huh, with these long ears here. Okay, so we have done the PCBs, aluminium bus bars, put the PCB, A, B, and Sean, we look the string of the M6 franchise. So this is our main negative. And we start with the first bus bar on this side. There we go. And then this one is our battery number one, battery number one balance lead positive. Goes on there, here to here. X bus bar from here to here. Uh, I think you get the idea, right? Okay, um, Houston, we've got a slight problem here. I've got one bus bar left, but um, this actually does not fit. It does not fit on these terminals here. I think these are made for the K versions of the batteries, where we have the terminals further to the end, and then they would fit but um, not on the old style batteries here. So I guess I have to make my own link once again. Paul's aluminium bus bars to the rescue. No, it is too short either. I don't have a link. Uh, maybe one of Maddie's bus bars. Come on, Maddie, don't let me down. Oh, they do fit. Look at this, they fit. Oh, Maddy. Okay, um, let's have a quick look at these aluminium bus bars here. They have a dimension of 28 millimeters, 990, and they are two, I would say two and a half. I think they are two and a half only, yes. So two and a half millimeters thick. Let's do the quick maths. Okay, I found the rectangular conductor resistance calculator. Aluminium. Okay, we've got the DC resistance. There, we've got a DC resistance of um, two, three. Um, so 37.5 milliohms. Okay, so this is one of Paul's aluminium bus bars. They've got the same length almost. Yeah, they are comparable. 9.5 is 20 and the thickness is, I think they are four millimeters, aren't they? 31.5 milliohms. And what about the bus bars, which usually comes with a cell? And 19.5, okay. Two millimeters, calculate. And the result is, so, and the winner is, Paul's aluminium bus bars with 31.5 milliohms, just followed by the Zeplos bus bars with 37.5, and this one has 38.7 milliohms. So there you go. Okay, well, let's go with these ones and see how they perform over time. Uh, we love the string on the MSX Vengeance with a torque of 5 Newton. Oh. Uh, there's, they are recommending here a torque of 5 newton meters with these bus bars. But um, I don't know. I think we will strip a couple of terminals here. Okay, let's go with 5 newton meters and see how we go. Stainless steel flange nuts provided. Five newton meters. I think this is a bad idea. Okay, first one is done. <laughs> uh, Houston, we got one. Oh no, stripped. Ah, for f sake! No! <laughs> yeah, super soft here. Okay, let's continue. Oh, we got another one! <laughs> Still <Zona> made! <laughs> Shit! 
Oh no! Two strip terminals! Ah! Now, make it three! We've got another one here! Oh, super soft! Come on! Oh. Three stripped terminals! Okay, let's repair them quickly! Here's my thread. Yeah. Here's the other thread. Oh wow. So what I'm using for thread repair for these terminals is a quarter inch UNC times one full threaded. This is a coarse thread. And you basically take one of these and just um, screw them in without any further preparation. They just go in. And they basically tap themselves into the aluminium terminal. And that's it. And then you use these slightly bigger UNC flange nuts. And it is bomb and fast. You can you just use the right bit for the set screws. And straighten them up. And because this is UNC size, the, the actual Allen key is not three, not four, not three and a half. It is something else which I don't have. So what I usually do is use two flange nuts with the uh, washer in between and counter them. And then use an 11 millimeter socket. And then get this little cable out of the way, line it up. And go. All right. Then you can feel at some stage it goes really, you know, like like that's it, and you're in. Take the nuts off again, and we are done. Nice and beautiful new stud, which will never break again, never ever again. I found another one. Cell number six had actually both terminals stripped. This was the first one we have replaced weeks ago and the negative was stripped as well. So I had to replace both. Five Newton meters. And now we should see no problem reaching these five. Ah, there we go. I uh, just realized I have totally forgotten to secure the PCB here with these additional screws and I think I have actually forgotten this on the other battery as well. Yeah, there are two screws over here and two at the end and I think I haven't done this either. Oh yeah, there's only one screw in there, see? And here as well, there's only one What's going on here? A black one and a silver one. Okay, I have to check this again here. It just came to my mind. I thought, I can't remember I have done this actually with this battery here. And, well, I didn't. Okay, so far we have now installed all the battery cells, um, mounted the bus bars, torqued everything, and also repaired four. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, cell number six positive was already done, but these ones were new, this one and this one were new. I, I knew about one or two more which were really soft when you tighten them, but I mean, we've got now, we've got now five terminals replaced. <laughs> that is a lot. That is really a lot. I should replace them all, right? To make them all the same. That would make sense, actually. So, and in the next step, we need to mount the terminals in the front panel and this is how the terminals look like so they have these tint copper at the end with a ring lock there's actually a thread in here and on the outside they've got a recessed contact so it's not actually it is not actually as exposed as on the other terminal from the other battery we have built before 
I like actually the fact that they have these threaded holes here with the nuts behind it. So you don't have to deal with any nuts or washers or anything. That is just a great system. Okay, let me put all these terminals in and then I'll show you how it looks like. So I have now mounted all four terminals and I realized actually that you can twist these plastic around the terminal and see this little notch here. This is actually where the plug connects to and depending on the location for your cable then you can just twist them in the right direction to make your cables fit and look nice. So it doesn't really matter which way around. Okay, this one is the next. Alcohol. And you have to take this sticker off the screen protector. There it is. Yeah. Satisfying. Okay. So this is always a bit of a <laughs> I don't I don't like this. It needs to be straight. Ah, you have to you have to put these rubber buttons on first so you can align your sticker perfectly. And here comes the sticker. I think what do you think? Is it straight or not? Looks all right. Okay, let's press it on. Okay, there's another protective film here. Here, yeah, see? I've noticed this one here. The actual sticker is... There's a dent in the sticker because all this shit was flying around in the box. See how shit this looks like? There, there you can see it. I need to ask Zeplos for a new sticker. Transport damage. Not good. Okay, and this uh, concludes our front panel. Well, at least from the front, because now we have to work on the BMS and the terminals and also the fuse. Okay, boys and girls, here comes the interesting part. Uh, we have to mount all these bus bars now onto the PCB, onto the BMS and terminals and fuse and make sense of such a construct. This is a piece of art. That is amazing. Yeah, as with the last battery, they use these folded copper tint bus bar, flexible bus bars, and they really use the flexibility here. I like it. That is amazing. Okay, well, first of all, some loops here with these cables. Okay, and again here they're using an 80 volt DC fuse with 400 amps for that. I'm always confused with that. So I would say one of these bigger washers goes underneath the fuse. So it has actually a good base. And then we have the bus bar, then we've got the other washer, the spring washer, and the nut. So the bus bar has directly contact to the fuse. Okay, now we have to figure out which bus bar goes to where. We could actually look at the picture, but um, let's figure it out. It can't be too hard. Because the BMS has three contacts here, three bolts up here, and we've got the two terminals for positive and negative, and the shunt here as well. So this bus bar here, for example, has three holes, so it can either go this way or this way. And I would say this is the connection from the fuse to the P plus of the BMS. Washer, spring washer, nut. Okay, and then we've got the other bus bar with the three holes, it goes here on top. And I think this is our main positive connection to the battery pack then. And then we've got this bus bar with two holes, which I think is for the terminals up here. But this one does not make sense. So it needs to be negative and connects to the shunt. Okay. Then we've got these massive big screws here. And they connect the flexible bus bar to our terminals. There. Okay, there's a bit of a stretch here with this 
flexible bus bar. Well, I guess this is why they are flexible. All right, I've got only two left now. I would say this is our main negative to the battery pack going on the shunt like this. And we've got only one left, which is how does, how does, why do we have, ah, and I was wondering what this part is for. This is actually a bus bar, which comes on top, yeah, which comes on top of our positive terminals. And then this flexible bus bar connects our fuse to our terminals, like, like this. See? Ah. Okay, this is everything we need to do with our connection of the BMS, bus bars, terminals and fuse. That is super simple. <laughs> it is a piece of art, right? I still don't know what this um, Chinese chewing gum is for. No idea. Ah, here, by, by the way, it says actually we have to torque all these connections with seven Newton meters. So all these connections, seven Newton meters. Okay. Okay, uh, so the cover for the fuse here does not fit anymore. This is clearly not made for a flat bus bar. I have to take my knife and cut this out a little bit here so it fits over these bus bars. I'll leave it like this for the moment. Okay, so before we can mount the BMS to our battery pack, we have to connect the balance cables and check the voltage. This is what you always do before you connect the BMS to a battery. All right, so. We've got our A connector. Okay, first one, 3.28, 5, 9, 8, 13. And then there's nothing. These are again the two black cables here, which are our first temperature sensor. 16, 19, 22, 26. And then we've got two more temperature sensor cables for the one further this way. So, and the last one is 52.5. All right, this all looks good. Okay. So, how can we, how can we do that? Okay, that's a bit tricky here. Okay, so, negative battery balance cable. We need a bit of a condom here to protect. All right, <laughs> that is stupid. Okay, balance cable one. Because I cannot really reach them anymore. Okay, the other balance cable goes in. Three, two, one. Okay, click. It is clicked in. And now you can take this one off, I think. Positive. Okay, nothing happens. <laughs> okay, so far so good. And now we can mount the front panel. I hope we don't have any problems with the terminals anymore. Right, that is it. Okay, um, before, before I put all these screws here in the front panel, let's turn it on for a first test and see if it works. Oh, the Zeppelos battery system, confirm. Um, exit, um, up, down, holy shit. 
Ah, here we go. <laughs> it just took a while. All right. Okay, uh, 52.68 volts, zero amps, and around 50% set of charge, which could be actually true. Let's see if we have any warnings. Nothing. Okay, no warnings. Temperatures, 15, 14, 14, 14, 15. Okay, that looks much better than the other battery. And cell voltages just under 3.3 should be very balanced this pack because we had the knee connected for several i think at least three weeks or so hey okay, this all seems to work just fine wait these are actually feet are they are they telling me they're going underneath here somewhere where are they supposed to go Really? Oh wow, there's a, I could mount these feet under the box here, but it's not really, yeah, it's, I'll show you, it's not really necessary because, because these feet from the next battery would actually sit, they would actually sit in this hole then here, see? And then the boxes, they don't, they cannot, they cannot move. And we also have these clamps here, these traps which then holds the whole battery in place with the other one on top of it. So we don't really need the feet because it sits on this trolley here anyway for the moment. I should actually get the original trolley for these batteries, right? Looks pretty cool. And see, these are these clamps. So we've got the hook down here. And then this one sits up here. And then it hooks into the battery on top of it and holds it in place. We've got one here, one on the back and one on the other side. So three of them plus the feet in this groove. And we also have this huge film which goes on the underside of our top panel to, um, to insulate the metal again against all the bus bars. Is it necessary? The, the lid cannot fall into the battery, cannot make a short. So this is actually pretty... And I'll show you the lid of the smaller battery we have built before. If you, if you remember, we put this clear plastic in here. And look at this, it doesn't even stick. It comes off all the time and has these bubbles here, these awful, terrible bubbles. You know, there's no way the lid can actually touch any of the bus bars or so and there's nothing which can fall off the lid onto these bus bars because it's only one part so this is actually not really useful here i think and the same here on this lid so this film i don't know maybe i'll do it later i, I really don't want to do it right now look how terrible this looks this this is not a good solution I mean, look, we put this lid on top of the battery. Yeah, and it cannot move. And we screw it here with 600 screws onto the chassis. So there's nothing you can actually bend down or... I, I would leave this plastic film away, really. It, it doesn't, it really doesn't make it any safer. Okay, let's have a very quick look at our battery monitor, COM5 19200 connect. So, timeout. Oh, why is, um, why is this not connecting to the battery? Five, connect. It, uh, it doesn't connect to our battery. What is going on now? Battery monitor, COM5 connect for some reason it doesn't connect what did we do to connect it we changed the baud rate but this is already on 19200 so this is correct this time now all the dip switches are in off position connecting timeout i i don't know what's wrong okay give me a second here i um i just tested with the other battery here and this works fine but as soon as i plug this into our new battery 
it uh, doesn't it doesn't connect no i'm still getting this timeout error it 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 doesn't connect i don't know why it's not communicating with this bms Well, what can I say? We have finished the Seplos Mason 280 do-it-yourself kit. Battery is all built, it is all finished, but it is not working. I, I have tested all my equipment, my computer equipment, the battery monitor software with the other battery here, and it's working fine. As soon as I plug in this yellow cable into the new battery, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't connect, it times out, it doesn't communicate. And I have, I have, um, I have contacted Seplos yesterday and send them screenshots, send a little video, how this all, how this all uh, does not work. And, and they got back to me and said, well, it's Friday and they usually finish up a bit earlier on Friday to do something fun with all their work colleagues together. And this is totally fine. I mean, don't get me wrong here. This is totally fine. It's Friday, it's a weekend. You should get your time off of work and everything. But um, I, um, I don't, I didn't, I didn't get I didn't get an answer yesterday so I don't know what's wrong and also what I have if you don't use the battery for a while the actual BMS turns off see there's no flashing light anymore as usually there's no life see even even pressing a button doesn't wake it up anymore the BMS shuts completely off if there is no charge or discharge within 24 hours or so and then you have to press the the button again to wake it up while um, the new battery here, yeah, see this here, see this one, the lights are on all the time, run and two of the capacity lights, but um, there's no, there's no power going in or out. So this is totally behaving differently to the other Mason we have built and this one doesn't go to sleep. It shows all the right values here on the screen, all the cell voltages, all the temperature sensors. So this is all fine and working, And but um, these lights are not turning off. The BMS doesn't go to sleep and there's no communication. So, so, all, in, so all in all, I think the BMS is broken, I think. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I pitched the idea to them. I have not back because it was Friday. Now it's weekend. So I think we have to wait until next week until we get a reply from them about the... Um... And it is such a nice battery again. Look how clean this looks. I'm a big fan of these PCB balance bus bar connection situations here. It looks very, very nice and clean. Medi's cable fits so well in here. So I guess this is a bit of a wrap up at the moment here. So what I will do is in the next, in the very next video, I will do a bit of a, um, of a verdict about the Seplos Mason system. Well, we have built now two of the 6.9 kilowatt hours and the 280 ampere hour do it yourself kit here with our battery 1.0, which is now the battery 3.0. Well, at least part of it. This is not the whole battery 3.0, so don't get me wrong with that. This is only a part of it. Wait, there's more. And, and I don't mean more batteries, but there's more to the battery system, you know. I mean, if you have a look at our battery 2.0, we've got DC distribution and connection. And so there, there's far more coming with this battery 3.0. This is only the storage component of it, but there will be, there will be more. I mean, I would really like to uh, charge this battery now to 100% here and see how the BMS actually works with these high capacity cells. But I don't have I don't have the, any of these cables here. I mean, I can potentially use the bus bars up here, the negative and the positive, and just connect my charger to these bus bars. But I don't have access to the BMS, so we cannot actually see if there is anything happening, what is happening. Without having access to the BMS and checking the safety parameters, I'm really I I really don't want to charge the battery like this. Ah, what a shame. We're almost there. 
Okay, guys, I think so far this video for now, for today. As always, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Very much appreciated. And I guess I catch you tomorrow when we have a little verdict about the C plus Mason systems, the do-it-yourself kit with the supplied batteries as well as the full do-it-yourself kit down here. And until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.